All right, well, today we're back to work on the C6 Competition Drift Car Build. We've got about, well, under a month. We've got about three weeks left to finish this car. Now, we've got a lot done, and it is most of the way there, but there is still a list, man. We've still got a decent list of things to knock out. We're getting ever closer, but we can't, uh, we can't let up now. So we've got a pretty big list still, bigger than it looks, but also pretty representative of what it looks like, because that's how much stuff we have left. A lot of little things, some big things, mostly small odds and ends. Um, and we've got some fab projects to do. I got those marked with this orange. This is not my handwriting. This is my girlfriend's handwriting. <laughs> I had her real write it for me. Um, so anything marked in orange is a fab project. So we've got to finish the intake, finish the intercooler mount, well, blow off out an intake air temp flange onto our intake pipe. Uh, we got to mount batteries. We got to do build a mount for the power steering reservoir um, and do those lines. So I think that's where we're going to start today. We've been so deep in wiring and disassembly and reassembly and mounting little odds and ends. We haven't done any fab work in a while. The old Fronius has not uh, has not gotten broken in much lately. She's just been kind of sitting here idly by. So that's where we're going to start. Let's work on some fab projects. That'll feel good. So first thing I say, we'll go ahead and work on getting our blow-off valve flange welded on and our intake air temp bung. Um, those two simple, simple little projects to uh, wrap this stuff up. So we need to figure out where we want to put this, cope our flange, drill our hole, you know the deal. So I'm going to quit jibber jabbering and I'm going to get to work. Let's get to it. Quick, easy fab project. Done and dusted. Out of the way. Came out pretty good. Thank you. 
All right, got the ball foul welded on and the intake air temp. Real happy with how those came out. The welds came out really nice. Now, uh, the hole saw I used was the exact size, which they normally gnaw out a little big. So the hole being a little big, it kind of sat on there wobbly. And when I went to tack it and weld it, it, it pulled it a little crooked, uh, which you, most people probably wouldn't even notice it, but I notice it. <laughs> You know, one of those things. You can't, once you see it, you can't unsee it, but hey, it's not the end of the world. Overall, came out nice. I'm really glad to have that done. That has just been a random project on the chopping block that has been bugging me. And I'm glad we finally got around to it and it's finished up. So now while we're all set up for aluminum welding, I'm gonna go ahead and weld out the intake. So we're happy with this, we're happy with where the filter is, all this stuff. So I wanna go ahead and get this welded out and then we're probably gonna make some sort of little bracket off it to the frame rail so just to hold it up you know this thing baja and around through the bumps and jumps at some of these tracks with this heavy air filter just those clamps is probably not going to keep it in place so let's yank it off clean it up weld it out and then start working on a little bracket or something like that It's interesting, something you don't really think about until you start welding a bunch of different pipe diameter sizes is that one inch more in diameter is three inches more weld per joint. So this being a five inch diameter pipe, each of these weld joints is about 15 inches. So overall to do these three pie cuts, we're welding for a total of 45 inches. It's a lot of inches, it takes a long time, but we got it done, no problem, no big deal. Easy peasy. All right, well actually after clamping it up, I really don't think we need a bracket because of how short it is. Like, that's not going anywhere. We want it to be able to move around a little bit if we do get in a front end rack and not be tied in with a bracket. And then it also makes it more serviceable because all we gotta do is loosen these clamps and pull the whole thing out uh, versus having to add another bolt into that equation. So as of right now, I'm just gonna leave it clamped, no bracket. Uh, if it becomes an issue later on, then we can add a bracket. Overall, I'm happy with that. Intake solid, it's on there, it's finished. Another project bites the dust. So now I wanna move on to mounting our power steering reservoir somewhere over here. We gotta build a pretty, not super elaborate bracket, but we don't have any firewall space left to mount it. Uh, but we want it over here. We don't wanna mount it on the fender arches because we want them to be easily removable. So we've got to build some sort of standoff to a bracket to hold our reservoir kind of out here in space. So that way we can still pull those fender arches off, um, but it holds it nice in the right spot near our power steering pump. So let's uh, start working on that, see what we can come up with.
All right, power steering reservoir is mounted. Been on the agenda for a while as well. One of those odd little projects that just needed to get done. I could have made these about a half inch shorter and brought this back it just as far as I could to keep it in front of this ridge, but as far away from the header as possible or still get the cap off. Um, but what we'll do is we'll either get a 120 fitting for here, which will tuck it pretty far away, or just an ORB Direct 90, which would point down like right here and stay plenty far away from the exhaust. So one of those things was always sacrifices, uh, and especially in an engine bay like this, there's a lot of stuff in here and you can only fit things so many different places. So yeah, we'll get a couple different fittings for that and then we can route our feed hose down here, boom, into our power steering pump. And then we'll have a return from the rack to the reservoir. Uh, we got a tap for our fitting here for our feed, our high pressure line. And then the power steering is done and dusted. So pretty easy, not too much left in that front. So now, speaking of fronts, <laughs> I wanna go ahead and finish this intercooler mount out. It's been bugging me, it just being here all unfinished. I wanna get these trimmed up. I wanna weld it out, I wanna drill some speed holes in it to make it look a little nicer. Just make it a more complete finished product. It's just all tacked together right now since we weren't sure how all this was gonna fit back together. Uh, since we basically, you know, fixed the intercooler without any exhaust here, we weren't sure if the turbo had moved around a little bit and we wanted to be confident that it was in the right spot before we went ahead and welded it out. It's going to be a lot harder to fix if it was already welded. So now that we know it's all good, we can pull it off, we can weld it out, we can trim it up, we can shine it up, we can make it look a little bit better. So yeah, let's tear this all back apart. So one thing I have been really pleased with on this new front end setup that we did is how serviceable it is. This took all of about five minutes to tear this whole front end assembly off the car. And that's about the same amount of time it would take if the car was fully operational, uh, because normally you would have to add in time for draining fluids and stuff that aren't there currently, but with the dry brakes, we don't have to drain any fluid. We just pop them, boom, pull the oil cooler out, piece of cake. So I'm really, really pleased with that. Uh, that was a really tricky thing to design and, and get right and have strong enough to hold everything but out of the way and, and other things still fit and overall pretty, pretty happy with how it came out. So now it's time to weld it out. We get it cleaned up as best we can. I probably should have put a little more time into cleaning that bar that we reused from the bash bar before welding this stuff on because it was pretty tricky to clean and it was still pretty dirty, but hey, it's just a mild steel front bar structure assembly, it's no big deal. It's not something super fancy or special. We're just gonna weld it out as is. Now, when it comes to welding things like this out, you know, it gets tricky and something people might not realize who haven't done a bunch of fabricating or TIG welding, you know, some stuff you're welding in a perfect world scenario. You can put it perfectly in this positioner, you can get to all the welds, but some stuff like this, it's just awkward. <laughs> it's just super awkward to weld and to get to all the welds. You know, I've got to clamp it to the table to hold it up because it's this big piece, uh, but clamping it to the table gets in the way of me getting to the weld. So it's just this balancing act, this back and forth of trying to hold it in a position where you can weld it, but still be able to get to the weld and, and have good control. It's always awkward when you're trying to weld. You know, at some points we end up having to weld left-handed and all this awkward back and forth just to get to the welds and get it welded. But that being said, welded out pretty easy, no big deal. Got it all welded up and now it's time to see if it still fits. So now that we know that everything still fits, there's a huge chance for warpage welding something like this where you have these kind of intentional gaps. So I wanted to make sure it all fit first before I put a bunch of time into uh, prettying it up some. So now that it fits, we went ahead and measured out for our speed holes to uh, just lighten this up a little bit. This is a bar is 
significantly overkill for what we're doing. So I wanted to lighten it up some, and it just looks a lot cooler than just a regular bar sitting there to have some holes in it, you know? I, I don't know. Holes always look cool. So as you can imagine, took quite a bit of time, but we got it done. We got all the holes drilled out, and then we moved on to cutting the plates and getting them ground down just to a little bit nicer, more aesthetically pleasing shape than a big square that's much bigger than it needs to be. So with all of that done, our shaping and cleaning and grinding and welding, it was time to put it all back together officially this time, make sure it all still fits and see what it looks like as one complete unit. So I go ahead and put the oil cooler on first. It's pretty tricky to get to with the lines attached with the inner cooler on. So I, it, I started just basically taking the inner cooler off first and then it's a piece of cake to get to the oil cooler fish the lines kind of up where they need to go, keep them from bashing around into everything. Um, and then we get the intercooler on, the intercooler piping on, and I even wanted to throw the bash bar on and see what it all looks like as a complete unit. All right, well, you can see how much better the uh, whole side looks than the non-hole side with the whole front input back together. I went ahead and piloted those holes, but I'm gonna let Josue drill those out. The plan was that we'll have him drill all these out, uh, but I got impatient and wanted to see what it looked like. I, I like it. It definitely helps spruce up the look of that thing a lot. It is a lot of things, it works, but it is ugly. It is just ugly. I tried my best to make it look all right. Uh, it's ugly. So <laughs> anyway, uh, it's sweet to see the front end all completely together. Now I did forget one thing. And that was a bracket from here to here. So this is plenty strong enough to support it. The problem is just there's nothing to keep it from rotating. So if it were to come loose and rotate down like that, it becomes lower, it could get hit by something, and then catastrophic failure. That would make an absolute mess. So we need to do a little bracket from there to there just to make sure it can never swing down like that. Uh, but other than that, pretty well done and dusted. And drilling those holes out. So now we need to consult the list. We're at that point, man. If you've built a car, you know about this point. There's just this point where you have stuff left, but you just have a really hard time kind of finding what to tackle. And oh, I'm waiting for one part for that. Oh, I still need to order the part for that. And that's why they say the last, you know, 10, 20% takes 80% of the time, just because there's so many little things and it's kind of hard to pick which direction to go. Sometimes you just got to start throwing the dart at the board and picking something to do. So one thing I want to do is not even on the list. So I don't know why I came over here. I want to put the front wiring harness we built in. So I got this harness all built up. This is our front, this is our rear. So I want to shrink this boot. Uh, but before we can do that, we need to know where this thing lays out and what direction we want to shrink the boot because it's a 90. So to do that, we really have to pull the intake off to get the wires to route back there. So I want to get that done. You know, I built the whole harness just by stringing it. I don't even know if it's gonna fit <laughs> or reach where I anticipated. So let's uh, let's try to get that tossed in so we can get this boot shrunk up, get it in for good, and then uh, hopefully it doesn't have to come back out. And then we can maybe put the intake back on for good. It's still got tape under there. It's just mocked up on there for when we did the intercooler. So let's get to it. This poor pipe has come off like a hundred times. So we went to town on yanking the intake off. Now we've done this enough times now to know the process pretty well. That's one of the more difficult challenges when building a car like this is you don't wanna do things over and over again. You don't wanna fully bolt and torque the intake down and then you gotta take it back off. But sometimes it just pans out that way. And sometimes you get kind of lost in trying not to have to redo something, you know, not put something together you're going to have to take apart that you end up making slower progress. Sometimes you just got to take it as part of it. So anyway, we get the harness mocked up in there. We figure out which way we want to route the boot. We go ahead and mark it, pull everything back out, shrink up the boot, and then we can reinstall the wiring harness officially and see if all of our links work out right. So like I said, I just measured this with a string and uh, built the whole harness out with all the branches and everything. So really hoping that this all fits how I expected. All right, wiring harness is in. Uh, for bench building it, really not bad. The links all worked out pretty well. We're gonna put the two sensor block here. This is for it. This is for a headlight, which will go right here. Intercooler fan right there. This is gonna go down to this one to the power steering. This one to uh, the blower fans. We've got some four inch end line blowers that we're gonna put down in the corners here and run a hose up. It doesn't really have to go very far. 
Uh, but basically the idea here is we're going to do hood vents and hopefully have those blower fans draw air through the hood vents, out the fender vents, and out. Just something to keep some air circulating through the engine bay along with the intercooler fans as well. Uh, so this side, I uh, should have branched it earlier. I don't know why I branched it so late. So you can see like the headlight one, it, it, need, it needed to branch back here. Uh, so I kind of messed that up, but that's okay. Still work just fine. We'll just do a little bit longer lead on the headlight. Boost control solenoid. Gotta get a OEM GM connector for here. The alternator. We got our other bowler fan wiring here. Yada yada. Starter wire. It all fits good. So I'm happy with that. Really happy with that. Glad to get that in there. So before we toss the uh, intake back on, I'm gonna go ahead and finally put our injectors in. No reason to keep waiting around. So we have a matched set of Dietworks 1500 cc injectors. So by match set, I mean 16 of them. So instead of just having eight, since this in intake has dual injector slots, we're gonna do 16 injectors. Now we're probably only gonna need one set for our power goals, but the idea is we already had the dual injector slots. Might as well get two sets and kind of alternate between them. Never had 16 injectors before, so figure might as well try it out. So uh, yeah, I guess let's uh, get these Johnnies installed. So the first thing we had to do was punch all of these plugs out that had been there to protect basically the inside of the engine so nothing fell down in there and then start opening our packs of injectors, greasing up the O-rings and installing them. Now, the pockets for the injector O-rings on this intake manifold are incredibly tight. I mean, just so the tightest I've ever had to deal with. It was really difficult to get these injectors popped in. Now, the nice thing is once they were in, they held their place very well. They couldn't flop around very much, but man, it was a bit of a struggle. So I went ahead and took the extra step since these uh, fuel rails have so much different hardware. They have stanchions going up, then they have brackets that bolt to that, and then the fuel rails bolt to those brackets. I went ahead and Loctited all of the hardware. This is not something we want to come loose, and the only bolts we should ever have to take out are the bolts that hold the rail itself to the brackets. We shouldn't ever need to really pull the brackets off for any servicing, so I wanted to make sure those had a lot of Loctite and uh, minimal chances of coming loose on us. So with all that done, we went ahead and set the intake back in place just for mock-up. Some of the other stuff we're gonna be doing it kind of revolves around having this all back together, at least somewhat there. All right, got the intake manifold back on with all 16 injectors in it. Looks pretty snazzy, all complete. So really happy with that. Um, I didn't officially bolt it down because I do need to get to some of the wiring under there still for the coil packs for that bank. We gotta do a little extension harness for those. And I'm sure there's something else will come up if I tighten this thing all the way down and the threads aren't very deep on these heads. The face has been milled down quite a bit. I just don't like, tor I don't wanna have to torque it down any more times than I have to. Uh, because just asking for trouble. So we're gonna wait until we are 1000% confident that it's not gonna come back off and then we'll bolt it all down. But yeah, so that being said, pretty happy with the progress today. Happy with how the wiring harness fits. Happy with how this all turned out. I'm just happy. Now, we do have a lot left to do. We still have a long list and we gotta keep, keep trucking. But for now, we are out of time. So I'm gonna go ahead and end it here. Thank you guys for watching. I hope to see you next time, but for now that's gonna be a wrap. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Goodbye.